What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Heads Up Advisor Thursday night. Exciting one tonight. We got an expert on the show. Back on the show again, Tony Hughes. Going to bring him on in a second here. But uh, those that didn't watch, go ahead and make sure you go back and watch the next one after this. You're going to want to see it. Combo Prospecting, one of our most watched shows. It won an award. One of the best podcasts of the year. The best podcast of the year, sales podcast. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, that being said, High Stakes Advising coming up in August. Check it out if you haven't already. But let's bring them on. Tony Hughes, new book coming out, Tech Powered Sales. Tony, my friend, welcome to the show. Hey, John. Hey, Craig. Uh, I love that conversation we had ages ago on Combo and really excited uh, about talking about the future of selling. Uh, it may be Thursday evening for you in North America, but it's tomorrow here in Australia. It's Friday morning. So I'm already coming to you from the future. There what are the go. lottery numbers? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, Tony, that was a blast the last show. We won. What was the uh, the, the award for again? What uh, uh, yeah, organization? I think, yeah, I think it was uh, best podcast or best video uh, from Top Sales World. Uh, it's a magazine run out of uh, of the UK that's got global reach. Got it. Yeah, look, nobody would have known that was one of my first interviews, but, man, did I prepare. I go, I got Tony coming on. You know, he's kind of a celebrity. I've been following him a long time. The book. I mean, I think we I think everybody that lists on the show has probably got the book. I was telling you pre-show here, Craig, is we use the word combo now. It's like you've you just combo. You fire a combo. It's a new word in our industry here. Combo yeah. prospect. People listening, when I say that, probably don't even know, but Tony's the creator of combo prospect. And then Tony, why don't we just start out with let's before we get into the tech side of the world, what is a combo? <laughs> Okay, I'll give you the short version of this. Uh, and combo does not work unless you nail your narrative. If your message is all about you, you're doomed before you begin. You have to create a conversation narrative that's all about that person and their ability to drive improved results in their role. And you need to add a little bit of personalization at the front end to show them that you know them. Um, so, so that's the prerequisite for combo working. And then what combo is, it's pattern interrupting the way that buyers and busy executives just tend to ignore anybody they don't know or anybody they think is selling or marketing to them. And a combo is a concurrent pattern interrupt to that person. So you phone them, you leave a voicemail, you send them an email, you do it all within 90 seconds, and that's a basic triple. Uh, the next time you contact them, you phone them, you leave a voicemail. You send them an email and you maybe send them a calendar invitation. Isn't that a wild concept, right? So that, and that's a quad. That's four touches. Maybe text message them and make it a pent. But the idea is you want their device buzzing and binging and dinging in their pocket and they're thinking, holy hell, this person's persistent. I wonder what they want. Uh, they're not going to go away. I need to get back to them. And if your message is right, it works spectacularly well. Uh, my business partner in a new venture I've started called Sales IQ Global. We've got all of my IP and we're putting it into an e-learning platform. My business partner is Luigi Prestonenzi, uh, and he's been doing Combo to build our own pipeline. He created a, a target list of 65 people, uh, and he's got 18 uh, uh, op opportunities out of targeting those 65 people within 30 days. He's had phenomenal success. And Louis was quite resistant to Combo himself. Mm -hmm. But he's, just, he's, he's actually writing up a case study of the actual numbers from doing this because I said, Louis, we must drink our own champagne. Uh, we must practice what we preach. And uh, he's got phenomenal results. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, I, I, go ahead, Greg. It, it's great. Uh, yeah, see, you're talking to people in America, Tony. And, you know, for most people, that first meeting was just like, I thought a combo was when they asked me if I wanted to supersize it in the drive <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? So it's a, uh, it was a great awakening. It, it, and I've got to tell you, a lot of people will read combo or even, you know, do training on combo. And then what they do is they execute in a way that they think they're doing it, but they're not really. So if you send somebody an email on a Wednesday and then call them on the Thursday, that is not a combo. The whole idea is you got to compress the touches, the pattern interrupt the way that they ignore. Yeah, I love, uh, you know, I had a conversation with a gentleman in, in the office next door to me and he was calling, calling, calling. I said, look, 
you're, you're going to keep calling. They don't recognize the number. When you combo them, then they're going to know who it's coming. They're expecting the call. And at some point, hey, they're going to take the call. Because in today's world, Tony, I mean, you're calling on the cell phone, right? I always just say, if the prospect, if I get the guy's cell phone, they can't hide from me anymore. But yeah. it's getting harder and harder because, they, you know, even I know when, when, a, when a number comes in that has the same area code as me and it's not saved in my phone, I know it's the new technology using <laughs> the local number. And so exactly. you got to just keep hammering them, leaving voicemail, text, so on and so forth. I like the calendar invite one. That's pretty ballsy. That's East Coast style. I think we're going to start trying that one. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you, you would never use the calendar as part of your combo in your first outreach sequence, but you can use it in subsequent ones. So anyway, people can have a listen to that, that interview conversation we had around combo that you've got recorded there for people. Yeah. So, so on the past when we talked about combo prospecting and you, you gave some great ideas and I always say, I wish I read the book sooner and you know, great ideas. And now we've explored, I'm a little advanced in our segment. We're a little bit, a little bit behind, but you got to have this tech stack, right? I, I got a new salesperson on. I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to do that. We're going to get that all automated. I don't want you doing any of that. I only want you doing strictly this. And so yeah. now we're in this world of tech powered sales. And if you're not using it, I think you're behind. I just want the, the quick question. What is a sales board? <laughs> it's funny. I, I this actually guy, right, this guy right here. Yeah, sales board. Right there. Um, I, 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 I'm told by Justin Michael that I coined the term sales board because I called him one. Um, so Justin Michael uh, is someone that I met years ago. Uh, I was coaching him on enterprise selling. He ended up reverse mentoring me on building strong brand in social. Um, and we've, we've learned a lot from each other over the years. Uh, and, and I regarded him as a sales borg <laughs> because he, he's a hybrid of human and machine engagements to build massive levels of opportunity pipeline everywhere he goes. Uh, and he's been, he's been this incredible student of how you can create a mashup of different tech stacks uh, to drive insane levels of productivity without damaging your brand. So I called him a sales borg. He's ended up building a community called salesborgs.ai. Mm -hmm. Anybody can go there. So just type into your browser salesborgs.ai and there's a free sales TQ test because uh, what we say in the book is everybody today needs technical quotient. We've always known that you need reasonable IQ to make it in selling and life. Uh, but you need very high EQ if you're in the world of selling or business. You need to know how to read others, understand yourself in your own strengths and weaknesses, but then know how in those interactions you can manage the nuances of politics and uh, and help build consensus in organizations for change. So you've always needed high EQ, especially in complex selling. But what you need today added to that IQ, EQ is TQ, technical quotient, because if you fail to learn to embrace and adopt technology that expands your reach and effectiveness, you'll just get outsold by others. Yeah, it's it's. Hey, I love it, your line. It's he, he's got a line in the new book: "The enemy of every seller is false hope." And then in another section, he said, "67 percent of a salesperson's time nowadays is spent on non-productive, non-sales activity." So, between the combination of wasting your time on things that you shouldn't be doing in the first place, and 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 delaying the, the sales cycle and then thinking you have a sales cycle on, on cases that you shouldn't be talking to anymore. It, it's just a recipe for disaster. And, and part of the logic of why you're saying, you know, you need to automate everything that you can possibly automate. Yeah. Cra Craig, it's true because 70% of what a seller does today can be done by tech. Uh, and the reality is the, the, the phase of selling that is the most difficult and most critical yet also where people thrash around the most being ineffective is in the opportunity creation phase of selling. So it's the most difficult phase and the most important phase because it's difficult to break through to busy people who don't know us. It's the most important because if we don't create enough opportunity pipeline, we then, we then try and force things in with the other smaller amount of deals that we've got. But the way we open determines the probability of closing the way we open determines the the velocity at which the deal will move. Uh, so that's why opening such a critical phase. And the tech stack 
is most effective in helping and saving sellers in that opening phase. That, that's what we really focus on in the book. So uh, the failure rates in selling are really high and they're increasing. We believe a third uh, of field salespeople will disappear uh, this decade. Wow. Uh, and there's a huge shift of capital. You know, we're in, we're in the, the, the early phases really, but we're right into the fourth industrial revolution. Everything that's gone on in the last 18 months, initially induced by COVID, it's all been a catalyst for accelerating. Get it up. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a digital first world now. Yeah, it, it's it's just turned up and advanced everything and just sped it up. Like, no, 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 a lot of you people are not needed. We just found out that we can do all this over Zoom. And, you know, maybe people don't want to see the salespeople, right? And so this combo prospect and approach, brilliant. You got the tech stack now. And I'm assuming that the book just kind of puts this, puts both of them together and go, this is how you do it and be a 2000, you know, 22 sales producer in today's world. Yeah, because because the reality is, is combo was a big clarion call to to wake up and take control uh, of top of funnel uh, for, for, for you as a seller and lots of great ideation. But it did not have much as far as specificity goes in how you do it. And what Combo does is it's filled with real world examples of building cadences and sequences and messaging uh, and the different approaches to actually doing this. It talks about all of the specific pieces of technology that you can use. So it, it's something that takes this bewildering array of tech that people can find overwhelming and it actually makes it relatable for people. I want to take two seconds as a side note. Uh those that signed up and registered today, we're giving away a free ticket at the end of the show for high stakes advising. Make sure you comment in the, in the section below. Um, so, so this sales technology, our industry, Tony, you would think we're, we're so far behind. I don't know if you work any insurance guys. We had Mark Hunter on and he's worked with a lot of insurance guys in the industry. They don't know what a cadence is. Okay. So, can you explain, because they just think, you know, one time and, you know, we're going to throw our dice, our hat in the ring and whatever. Can you explain to them what a cadence is to a cold prospect? Yeah, so so I'm actually a cyclist and you get a little computer on your bike that measures your pedal cadence. It's basically the frequency with which you're doing things, right? So, so cadence is how often are you touching this person? A sequence is what what are the things you're doing within a touch, right? So what I say is the most basic sequence that you should run at somebody is a triple. Phone them, leave a voicemail, send an email, right? So, so that's a triple. So, so that's a sequence, a type of sequence, a triple. And then the question is, well, how often would I do that? I wouldn't want to be doing it every day. You know, that, that might make them angry, <laughs> right? So, so how are you going to space this out? That's the cadence. Yeah, and, and I, I was reading a stat the other day and it said that 20% of, you know, the sale or the touch with the prospect is made on like the 12th contact. How long are these sequences and cadences going now? Running. Get in touch with people because because we're, yeah. we're just flooded. I mean, you, I heard you on the, the webinar earlier and the amount of people that are reaching out to you, the amount of emails, you're not going to remember just cold prospecting if it's once so how many times do we have to really do it in today's world so depending on whose research we choose to believe it takes between seven and 13 you just mentioned the number 12 it takes seven to 13 touches for a prospect to respond to someone they don't know a seller that's trying to get to them on average depending on whose research we believe on average sellers give up in less than two or three touches now, a combo is three touches all at once, but here's the magic. If you space out your touches, so if you phone on a Tuesday, sorry, if you emailed on a Tuesday, then phoned on a Thursday, you know, then phoned again on the Monday, you're, you're doing single touches and they're spaced out. They're very easy to ignore. The idea of compressing this into concurrent outreach is your pattern interrupting. So, you know, imagine someone's on the subway, their cell phone rings and they go, they're not in my address book. I'm on the subway, not taking it, dump the call. Then then their, then their device goes, bing, oh, they left, they left a voicemail. I wonder who it is. They'll have a listen. And all it says is, uh, 
Hey, John, it's Tony from Sales IQ. Looking to get 10 minutes in your calendar. I'll send you an email. You don't have to give your big you know, value pitch. You're going, oh, I, I, wonder, I wonder who Sales IQ is. I, I wonder what this guy actually wants. Um, and, then, and then what you do is you send an email. You've dramatically increased the pro probability of opening the email because then their device goes bing on the subway and there's the email. They open it and read it. If you send it on its own, it just gets ignored. So don't confuse being ignored with being rejected <laughs> and don't confuse interest with a real prospect because just because someone's interested doesn't mean they're ever going to buy. So again, we've got to nail our narrative. We've, we've got to build a conversation narrative about how this person in their role can drive improved results. So we need emotional resonance and it needs to be underpinned with commercial, what I call business case value. So we need to open strongly rather than this disingenuous friending strategy, which most people just regard as a time-wasting ploy of a seller. And and uh, Justin Michael's stuff, he, he's an SDR. I watch some of his stuff. He's he's brilliant. He's, uh, you know, I'm impressed. He writes like Craig writes, and he's just brilliant guy, SDR. These guys don't know what SDR because they don't know the SaaS world, Tony. We're so far behind. SDR, account executive, account executive, they think is a salesman. They don't realize that's a salesperson. Is that like a slick way that the SaaS came up with not being a salesperson, calling the account exec? Yeah, exactly. Well, everyone has a thousand different titles to avoid being called what they really are, right? But, <laughs> but, but just to explain to people, um, back in about, I think it was 2010, the book was published called Predictable Revenue. It was written by Aaron Ross. And within the book was a case study written by Mary Lou Tyler within the book, and it chronicled Salesforce. And what Salesforce decided to do was to adopt the Henry Ford model of industrializing the sales process. So let's let's break the roles down into specialist functions and then move the prospect along the production line, right? So that they created different types of inside sellers, someone who would just look at the data and create lists, an inside seller who would just respond to inbound inquiry, an inside seller who would drive outbound and try and set up an appointment for a senior seller, what we'd call an account exec or a field seller. Right, So they go from stage one to stage two at that phase. So they're moving down the production line. Then they do the blended qualification discovery. Then they'd have people get involved to do solutioning and demoing and, and help build business cases, You know, the value engineering piece. Now, for a lot of us listening to this, we, we don't have that level of scale. right? So the truth is, as an individual, you might be creating your own opportunity pipeline. You'll be qualifying some inbound. You'll be trying to self-generate opportunities with your own outbound. And then you'll be developing opportunities and relationships, qualification and progression. You just need to apply those principles to the areas of work that you're operating in in every any given point of day at the time or week. I, I actually have this book because I've, I've wow. been studying it and trying to, you know, take all these things in my practice. And which is interesting in our industry as insurance brokers, it's all outbound, right? Nobody call Tony. Look at it. This is our industry. You, you, you know, you look at the, the, the hot chick that's got a million guys chasing her. She's married, <laughs> right? She, and she's married. This analogy is dangerous. She's not calling anybody to go, hey, will you go out with me? That's our world. And so we as insurance brokers, we've got to get them to break up their marriage with yeah. that, somebody you've been with five years and go out with us. So all, ours is all outbound. And, that, and that's why the combo prospect approach works so well. But the, but the thing now is, is, is okay, how do I, and reading this, how do I optimize it, right? And so in the book, I've already, Tony was nice enough to send me an advanced copy. Uh, I want to get a signed copy soon from you. But, you know, with the book, it shows, okay, how do we simplify this through technology? Because, look, when you're comboing, you've got this cold list, you've got to use technology or else, you know, you're going to be behind. You just can't get it We're done. You're going to be out of business, even worse. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, anybody who fails to adapt to changes in the marketplace becomes irrelevant. And, and the reality of all change is, is the things that can kill us happen slowly, 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 and then there's a tipping point and it's suddenly. Um, and, and that's the reality of technology. Um, right now, every business leader in the world is thinking, hey, what's going on out there has created a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to drive change we previously never even imagined might be possible. Uh, our banks, 
our shareholders, our regulators, our customers, our staff, the unions, everybody's giving us a rope. You know, they're, 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 they're giving us social license to do things we couldn't get away with previously. And for every business, what they can do right now, it's a unique point in history, they can do these two things concurrently. They can drive down cost to acquire a client and they can drive down cost to serve. So they can drive down cost. The other thing that they can do concurrently is drive up customer or employee or partner experience. So they can give people a much better experience and at a lower cost by running what I call channel shift initiatives. Get people out of expensive human channels and into highly cost-effective self-serve channels, apps and, and, and website, even out of a call center into self-serving. And you can give people a better experience. You know, for me, my my first job, you know, was working in a bank. Um, but, but if I never walk into a bank for the rest of my life, I'll be very happy. I've got an app. I've got a website. I've got a business banker I can talk to once or twice a year when I need to. You know, when I when I do my big um, annuals superannuation transfer payment, it's above all my limits. I've got to phone them to change the limit. But that's about the only time I ever call, right? And yeah, I, had I, go and do, I had to go do a wire the other day. I go, what do you mean I got to do a wire? It's my money. Why do I have to come to the bank? It was the biggest ordeal. I, I was kicking and screaming like a big baby. That's how spoiled we are, right? And, and, and in COVID right now, I think what a lot of advisors realize is, is you know, maybe I don't need to go see my people in person. Maybe we get we got to do a show on crypto on why banks will be disintermediated. Yeah. Well, but 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 the, here's the thing: you watching this as an advisor, you will get disintermediated if you don't figure out how to create the level of value that funds what we do. Because if all we're doing is sitting in the middle, providing information, helping people transact, and in our mind, oh yes, but we provide this relationship. John, can I tell that story about that CEO I was talking to, where they had a territory where there were no, there were no reps. What's go ahead? Yeah, so um, I was talking to a room full of CEOs a couple of weeks ago, doing a talk about the future. One of them, in a lunch break, said to me, and "I'll give you the short version of this. They're a global company, and 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 they supply um, pharmacists." So, so drug stores with all of the compounds and other things that help them make pastes, ointments, medicines that Pretty aren't out of, that that are not out of the box from the pharmaceutical companies. Big big margin business. I love yeah, that story. Yeah, it's a big sorry, margin business. Great story. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a global company, global company, and they invest in field reps that call on the drug stores every two weeks to maintain mind share, to make sure they're getting share of wallet and loyalty. During COVID last year. They lost two of their sellers. They, they, the two of their sellers left the business, resigned, and they couldn't backfill those roles because of COVID. So for four months, these two high-performing territories had no rep, and then they noticed something in their CRM. Revenue was growing, but it was growing at higher margins than ever before in those territories and with the highest margins in the entire business in North America, across Canada and the USA. And they thought, holy hell. We've had no rep for four months, strong growth, highest margins in the company. What in the world is going on? They go and interview those clients and they say to them. I mean, they didn't like the salespeople? Well, they <laughs> said. Didn't they the people. But the sellers would say the value I provide is in the relationship with the relationship with the drugstore owner and the pharmacist. That's why we're doing well. When they interviewed the owners, the owner said, do you know what? Your sales reps, when they turn up, they take me away from serving my customers. They're just an, an interruption. And the inf information they provide me, I can get in your newsletter and the emails that you send to me. So I didn't really see any value in them anyway. So if you replace them, you replace them. If you don't, you don't. You know, I don't really care. And the company's going, what? They said, but we, we spend a lot of money on these people for you. Sh surely there's value you know, in, in what they provide you when they turn up. And they said, well, actually there is. There's one thing they do for us that we do really value. They help us get a discount. <laughs> and this company thought, what? The only value in the eyes of the buyer is they discount our product. And when we when they were withdrawn from the process, sales went up at high margins. So here's the experiment this company ran. They said, we don't want to wreck our core home market in North America. Let's go to a backwater like Australia, where we've only got three of these reps in the whole country. 
So they, they got rid of those three reps in Australia. They've yeah. had no reps in the market for a year now. It's been over a year. Their business has never performed more strongly. Strongest growth, strongest margins than they've ever experienced. A, and, and they diverted that capital from the field sellers. They diverted that capital into the inside selling function. Those technical people on the other end of the phone that can answer questions and help when there was a query for the people in the field, and they up their game with digital engagement. Now, that's an example. If if you feel I'm immune from the sales bot apocalypse or the advisor bot apocalypse, I'm immune from this because I build relationships. Well, I got to tell you as a, as a client, I'm not looking for more relationships from suppliers and vendors, right? I, I just want a small circle of relationships with my friends, my trusted inner circle. I want my time back. I've got 21 and a half thousand unread emails in my inbox as we're doing this right now. I've got 340,000 followers and connections in LinkedIn. I get bombarded in people requesting my time and help and spamming me to death. I want my time back. And that's the world of most of your clients. A hundred percent. You know, you know, for saying that, look, I'm so glad Tony came back on the show. We had a great time last time. Anybody who picks up Tony's books, goes to Amazon after you read the book, leaves a comment. We're going to send you a $50 gift card for doing that. Picked up this book, Tech Powered Sales. You're gonna love it. If it's, I didn't get, you know, if it's as good, if it's half as good a comp of prospecting, it's gonna be a game changer. Or, John, or John, it's, John, it's actually ten times better. It's got, it's got in there all of the examples of how to go and build all of these cadences and sequences. So, so I can see already. I, mean, I can you, already. You, you name it. names. I mean, you got, look, you should, if you want this part of the funnel, you, here's the, here's the contractors. You want this part, here's the contract. I mean, it's great. You, you, you spell it out. It's like, we can lead the horse to water. We can't make a drink. So if you're too stupid to buy the book, that's your problem. So once you do, then yeah. you're going to know what you don't know now. I, well, there's, I, a, there, there's a thing created called the Agoji sequence, which was a sequence that's worked really well in Outbound. And we've actually published the, the Agoji sequence inside the book. Oops, I'm trying to yeah, get that right. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so, hey, I've, just, I've actually got to let people know something a bit sad. The book's already now unavailable in print, and the next print run is not until the end of September. But you can get the ebook and audio book still. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's incredible. I already saw the picture because I know that's outreach. That's what I use now. It's a exactly. Little for these guys. But I just I just paid like forty five hundred dollars to have sequences written, and now you're giving me the sequences for nothing for outbound. So yeah, I'm a little late to the party, but at least I started. I'm excited to get it. Well, actually, I actually already have the digital copy, but um, it stinks to print this out. But go ahead and and uh, pick it up online. Like I said, leave them a comment on Amazon, and uh, we'll give you a fifty dollar gift card. To show us a copy of it. So hey, everybody, remember this is a B two B instruction book. We're just one little slice of the economy that's B2B. Yeah. It, it, except that we are, we're a very old, we're 20 slow years to change behind. industry. 20 years behind. Uh, Tony, you, you talked about these people worrying about getting replaced, right? You, you see it. You're in the market. I mean, the thing I would love about you is when I watch your stuff, I know you're, always, you're on the ball. You're out there. You're learning. Every time I, I see your stuff, it's new. It's good. I know you're in the game, so you're somebody that I follow and watch a lot of stuff of. How do these guys avoid? Now, I'm not talking to the guys that are sailing to retirement, right? We know where they are. There's a lot of younger guys on that I love. We love the energy. What What do they do now to keep from being obsolete in this business? What are the things they should do? Okay, so 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 the reality is, don't do things that machines can do. Focus on the truly human elements that create the value that funds your role. So for, for example, we know that the fastest path and the highest probability for winning a new client is if you can combine trigger events with referrals. So, so for example, a new senior person into a role is normally hired into that role to drive change. And they're open to new conversations and they're, and they're open to actually talking with you. A more junior person that's been in a role for a very long time just sees change as a whole lot of work and risk. So if you can find the trigger event of a new senior person into a relevant role within a company 
that's in your ideal customer profile. So there's this concept of target organizations that are in your ideal customer profile, because that's higher propensity to buy. And then understand the buyer personas in those organizations that are part of the consensus decision for change. Understand how they're measured in their role then create messaging about how each of those individuals can drive improved results in their role. And then when you get senior person changing roles, what you've got is this situation where propensity to buy, where your relevance is the highest, right? So you're talking to someone, you're the right place at the right time. Now you can use technology to monitor for trigger events. You can use technology to go and find organizations in your ideal customer profile. Tony, you break can, down what that is, trigger events, because that was a big, you know, mind-blowing thing, last event for me. I didn't know what it was. Tell okay. them what trigger events is and tell them, tell the insurance guys, stop being cheap and invest in these type of things that give you the shortcut to success here. Okay, so, so a trigger event is something that happens in the world of the buyer that creates awareness of need or awareness of problem. And a trigger event from our point of view is something that gives us context for a conversation. So when we call someone out of the blue, rather than this artificial friending strategy, hey, Mary, how's your day been? Did you have a good weekend? They go, who, who are you? This must be a seller, right? But if we say, hey, Mary, congratulations on the new role. I noticed, and then we play back something that's happened. Hey, I noticed the organization's just you know, is currently hiring a lot of people in this role. You've just expanded into South America. You've just launched this new product. I've got some ideas on how you could, and then you give them a double-edged benefit statement, what I call a point of view about how they could drive improved results in their role. And they say, hey, do you mind if I ask? And then we ask a question that leads to the commercial value, the business case for change. Uh, and, and this is the conversation narrative framework. If you want to learn about this, uh, there's a, a website called salesiqglobal.com, salesiqglobal.com. We've got a free course on there called Selling During Tough Times. There's a webinar that explains all of this and a free learning module that'll help you. But, but you use that conversation framework, but the trigger event gives you the personalization at the front. It, it's, it, it's the context for the outreach, right? So you get much higher win rates if you work on where there are trigger events because... Here's the thing, at any given point in time, and Steve Richard talks about this, uh, uh, Steve Richard is a great friend of mine, at any given point in time, only 3% of the market is actively looking for what it is that you offer as an advisor. Absolutely. But, but 40, 40, 40% of the market is open to change. Now, if you have a conversation narrative that's all about you and what you do, you'll only appeal to the 3%. If you build a conversation that's all about their opportunity to drive improved results in their role, now you'll appeal to at least 43%, maybe higher. So you're increasing the pool and you're starting with strong relevance and you're setting the agenda around the business case for change. Because increasingly today, we grow our business by taking market share away from competition. There's no such thing as a rising tide you know, just floating all of the ships higher, we have to take market share from competition. So at the end of the day, well, why would that make sense to them? And it's got to be a customer centric conversation, not an us centric. Hey, Tony, so you talk about, let me ask you a question. So here's what a lot of people do in our business. You just talked about creating personas, I call them archetypes. You know, you need to understand, like you said, from the client's perspective, so most of the buyers for most of our listeners are non p l operations managers whose job it is to be in charge of compliance processes and administration of stuff and a lot of healthcare brokers advisors consultants again love to call themselves what they're not um, they will do outreach to human resources people who i just described a basic prototype. These are people who are interested in turnover, retention, recruitment challenges, things like that. And, and the brokers will lead and focus on not only themselves, but how, you know, their ideas and their features and benefits will result in a 15 to 30% reduction in cost. 
Do you see a problem in matching that messaging with the persona as I described the typical HR manager? I really do. Because unless this person is measured in their role on achieving that outcome, and they're probably not if they're in HR, you're not speaking to something that they care about. If they've been in that role for a long time, what you're actually saying to them is, hey, I've got an idea on how you can take on a change program that's a whole lot of work and risk. Now, we don't <laughs> say that, but that's, but that's the way they think. Right? So we, that's, we've what we, that's what we preach all the time. To the he doesn't you. know anything about the industry, guys. And in, and in three minutes, he understood that there's a, probably a big messaging conflict with what most of you are saying. Whereas if it's a new person in that role and we said, hey, I've got some ideas on how you can achieve some quick wins in the role in the eyes of your boss. So, so you can help the organization deliver these outcomes and in a way that, and then you talk about improvements for them in their role as well, right? Because everyone's looking for some quick wins if they're in a new role. I remember when I, I, I got yep. the sales director job, the you know, the, 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 the president of sales for a public corporation. And I remember when I got that job, I'm thinking, man, um, the boss gave me a huge bonus. The CEO gave me a huge cash bonus to get me into the business. Um, I'd come from a competitor. First time in my life I'd done it. I'm thinking half the people here hate me because I was on the competitor's side. The boss has given me this massive bonus. I'm on this huge money. I need to deliver some quick wins. I, I need to get people thinking, man, it was a really good good thing that we hired Hughes. You know, not, well, who is this guy? Who does he think he is? So I was looking for some quick wins in my role. Every, every senior person thinks that way. How do I help my boss think they made a great decision hiring me? So if they can go to their boss and say, hey, <laughs> I've got some ideas on how we can achieve this and that, uh, and in a way that also, you know, drives 15% of cost out, they go, wow, I'm so glad I hired you. So make it about the client being the hero, not us. That's really the key. I think we're, we're just the guide. I, They're I the yeah. hero. Charge, I should have charged people for this event uh, today, and I'm going to do it next time. Hey, Tony, I got a quick idea for you. I think I think High Stakes Advising 2022 needs to have Tony Hughes at that event. What do you say? I'd love to. I'd love to. And uh -huh. hey, Craig, Craig, I just got to back. I got to back to what you said about the guide because you've shown real insight here. You're dead right. Everyone in selling, all of the advisors watching this, we all know that we need to be good at telling stories. The problem is most of us tell stories where we're not the guide, we're the hero of the story. And that and that causes people to pull back. Or well, we tell stories that send them to sleep because they don't understand the context of the story and why it would matter. So what Craig says is so true. All we are is the guide in the story. They and others like them that we already work with are the heroes of the story. I, I, I love that this reminder going into, you know, winners coming here fourth quarter is, is 40 percent of buyers are interested you said but three on three percent is ready to buy now i didn't know that other stat i can't wait to go back and watch this show again but uh it's awesome hey um, guess what time it happened john it's summertime everybody's going to sit on their ass and do nothing for the next two months and so for those people who are motivated they can really do some damage in the next 60 days read this book pick up this book like i said $50 gift card. You pick up the book. You give a, a, a good review on Amazon for Tony, what you think of the book and uh, check it out. Um, Tony, next step for guys on here. Listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know it's your 22 year old daughter's birthday. So I'm going to let you run. I, I, I could, we could talk to you all day. They would love it. Um, and I can give away a free ticket here too. Uh, what's the next step? What's these guys listening? What's some of the technology that you, they should invest in and take next and, and learn? Okay, so um, my, my advice is take what you've already got and learn how to use it properly. Most people treat the, 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 you know, the monthly fee they're paying for tech, most of them treat it just like their gym membership. You know, they're paying the fee every month, but they hardly ever go. So the thing is, you'll have a CRM system that you're using as an advisor. Get good at using it. Figure out how to build your reports and, and, and dashboards. You should be using something like LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Learn how to build those Boolean searches in the search wizard and save those searches. Uh, so, and if you've got saved searches that you can run, it can then serve as a trigger event notification platform for you. 
So, you know, uh, there's also sales intelligence tools out there that will source for you email addresses and cell phone numbers. So there's a product, for example, called Lucia, L-U-S-H-A. There's things like Zoom Info that acquired discover.org. In this market that I'm in in Australia, there's a great platform called Trigger uh, that does the sales intelligence data as well as the trigger events. But if you just think of those three things, your CRM, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, or even LinkedIn Free, uh, and then those sales intelligence tools that will give you mobile phone numbers and cell phone numbers, just dig in and get good at using those. YouTube's amazing. The vendors have often got, you know, their own, in essence, online training as well. But invest the time in the evenings. Make yourself a cup of tea or pour a glass of red wine or have a beer and just sit there and dig into these things. Because if, if I, as someone who's 59 years old, if I'm an old dog that can learn new tricks and create amazing success leveraging technology, so can you. Old dogs who learn new tricks are much more powerful than enthusi enthusiastic young pups that are just a bit naive. Yeah, I love the fact that, you know, you got, it's kind of like me and Craig here, you got the younger guy, the older guy, and, you know, you bring them together, the old knowledge and the new stuff, it's a, it's a lethal combination. And, and guys can learn it, older guys that want to do it. Some are set in sail and that's okay. But for those out there that are listen, because anybody listens, listen to the show here, they want to go after it, they want to win new business. That's why they're here today. Go after it. The new book for Tony. Uh, Tony, where else can they find you? I know you got I know you got some sales content and some stuff to learn. Where else can they find you? What should they look up on you? I'd really encourage you to, to connect with me in LinkedIn. So Tony J. Hughes in LinkedIn. There's a lot of Tony Hughes in the world. So Tony J. Hughes in LinkedIn. Uh, if, if you want to do any online learning around these concepts of, of trigger events and combo prospecting, there's a create pipeline program at salesiqglobal.com, uh, salesiqglobal.com. Uh, the other thing is buy the book. And if you want to connect with me uh, personally or see my videos, other podcasts, webinars, um, uh, go to tonyhughes.com.au. Tony, excellent. Look, we, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's always fun. I'm going to expect you at the event next year. Um, it's going to be good stuff here. So everybody else, thanks for joining us. I'm going to do one second real quick, give away the ticket, pull the ticket here. Redmond Sherwood, CEO of Benefit Leader. You want a ticket to High Stakes Advising in August, reach out to us. We'll get you out that ticket. Everybody else, thanks for joining us. Tony, most of all, go enjoy your day. Good luck. I don't think I don't need luck with this book because you're already sold out. It's, you know, unbelievable. I can't wait to dig into it. If it's half as good as the last one, cool boy, cool baby. It, it's, it's, it's 10 times better. The ideation from Justin Michael in here is insane. Thanks, Beautiful. everyone. Thanks, John. Download Thanks, it John. this weekend. Thanks, Watch it over the, read it over the holiday weekend. Tony, enjoy your day. Enjoy that birthday. Take care. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, everybody. Take care, guys. Bye -bye.